Let's go. Welcome to Can We Talk Sports. I am Karen. And I am Kawashika. Oh my God, Kawashika. Shannon would be so proud of me. I had my introduction. I know. <laughs> I mean, we worked on that forever. All year. All, All year. year. Oh. But we got something to say. Yes, we do. We do yeah. have something to say. Yeah. I am so excited for today. I'm so excited for the guests we have on the show. We are going to our community, the Soto. Oh, yes. oh my God, we got Miss Annie coming on the show and we're gonna really dig into about civil rivalry. Right, right, it's like a reunion. That's right, the Soto. <laughs> you. It's just gonna be great, great to be able to just talk to her. She's in a new space right now and just being able to have her on the show, that's going to be wonderful. I mean, we play high school, college, oh my God, now NFL, it's time. Wow, we get to see that through somebody we know. Right. Most of the time we see that on TV, right. we see somebody else we don't know. But to be able to see somebody that's right in our community, that have done right. it, and to be able to just be able to talk to her and have her on the show, that's going to be awesome. And also, I mean, she's really down to earth guys she really is and so I'm really down to earth so we finna we finna chop it up the dreads it's like hair with a purpose it's like what people do with tattoos the power of the dreads touchdown Colorado I kind of like watching it blow in the wind when he runs in the end zone <laughs> everywhere we go they say oh let's do the dreads let's play this number two I think the dreads make them magic that's how people everybody notice me honestly the dude with the dreads is Colorado wide receiver LaVisca Chanel Jr. Visca to his friends, the worst case scenario to his opponents. LaVisca 10, 5, touchdown, touchdown Colorado! It gives people nightmares. They put their best cover guy on him every week and they, they can't cover that kid. A freak of nature. He looks like LeBron James. When I saw him run, I was like, yeah, he's, he's going to be dangerous. Chenault grew up in the Dallas suburb of DeSoto, but his dad, LaVisca Chenault Sr., raised him to root for the Miami Dolphins. He was a diehard Dolphins fan. If Dolphins was losing, just know he was gonna be an angry, angry, angry person in the house. His dad was very active in sports with them, with the whole family, really. Very loving, he loved his kids. On July 17, 2009, the Chenault family was returning home from a pool party in Irving, Texas. Ten-year-old Visca sat in the front seat. It happened so quick. It's something that kind of it, it's just edging in your mind forever. I remember pretty much all of it, but yeah, I don't, don't want to talk about that, honestly. During the 30-minute trip, a tired Annie pulled over to let her husband drive. As he was walking around the car, he, he had on, you know, the slides, and they had been swimming, so he kind of like stumbled. And when he stumbled and got hit by the car, then he got hit by another car. LaVisca Chenault Sr. died at the scene, leaving behind his wife and six children. He was 39. It was such a traumatic thing for us. I know we all pulled together and we was hugging and holding each other. We just got together and said, we got to move on. So, you know, we got to move on. I think I did grow up pretty fast after that. Shortly after the funeral, a son decided to honor his father. He was going to do dreads from now on. His dad did not have dreads, but we come from about biblical days where we grew up in the South and they were like, your hair is your strength. He wanted to grow his hair. Year by year, inch by inch, Chenault made good on his dreadlock promise. Then last season as a true freshman, he made good on his first ever collegiate football touch. The ball pops loose to Colorado, picks it up. 
touchdown. After his very first score, there was just one more thing to do. I said, this is for you, Pop. It's just like a dedication. I thank my pop for just, you know, giving me the knowledge and understanding, the ability, the strength. It's tough to grow up without a dad, but the way he's able to handle himself and handle all the fame that's coming his way right now, he knows who he is. Chenault's dreadlocks are now 19 inches long and growing. So is his commitment to a memory. The dreads represent family for Visca. They're connected with his father. I don't see him cutting his hair anytime soon. I think it gives him strength, and I think it gives him encouragement, just remembrance. The longer they get, the stronger he get. How about that? <laughs> now it's time to fill this seat. Everybody get up and stand up for our guest, Miss Annie Chanel! <laughs> right. Welcome. Have How y'all doing today? I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. How y'all doing? <laughs> We're doing good. Welcome to the show. Thank you. DeSoto, Thank you very baby. Much. Hey, DeSoto, you. Yeah, you, know right, baby. you know how it goes. You know how it goes. Oh my God. So it's, how's it so going? Hey, it's been wow. It's, it's exciting. It's exciting. I'm just not getting used to it in the second year. Second the year? first year was like wild. It was like I was going through a dream. You know what I'm saying? Wow. It's like okay. here, there, here, there. You know, right. with Vante in college, so. You know what? That with the corona, I kind of got a little break. <laughs> oh wow, yeah. Because you know, Vance and I didn't have up to six games. Right. So I ended up being at all his home games last year. So I went to every Jag Jaguar home game. Wow. I was there to support him. He did very well. Yeah. It's just a blessing. We might not have to have an icebreaker <laughs> on the show because you're so much fun. But we normally right. play this game called Would You Rather. Okay. So Miss Annie, would you rather have collard greens or cabbage? Collard greens because they less on gas on you. <laughs> <laughs> Can we talk sports? <laughs> no. <laughs> For real, I grew up that you can't eat cabbage after five o'clock. Really? So right. like I cook early. Like right now I got dinner done. I don't cook roast. I cook oh, I cook some over. green beans oh. and potatoes. I cook some macaroni. I cook cornbread. I grew up like that in the southern and certain right. things like in the southern, like we can't eat cabbage green after five o'clock. Oh. <laughs> we should have been You're okay. welcome. I'm from Mississippi. Well so we I coming over cook. for dinner today. <laughs> did, did you know? We should have did that one. Oh. Did you know? Yeah. That you cannot <laughs> eat cabbage after <laughs> five. <laughs> Word for the wise if you got gas. Right. <laughs> so my question is, would you rather live in the jungle or the zoo? Definitely not jungle because I'm a Leo. Right. So you know we the lions, so we the queen and kings anyway. I rule this nation. Yes. <laughs> it's all me. Yes. <laughs> I'm just swinging around. <laughs> Only, only, and can only we talk sport? sport. D-U! Yeah. <laughs> okay, so tell us a little bit about yourself. My name is Annie Chenault. I have a son, LaVisca Chenault Jr. He's in the NFL for Jacksonville Jaguar. This is his second year. I also have a younger son, Levante Chenault. He's a junior at the University of Colorado, which we're looking for him to have a big year this, too, this year, too. So I have two sons that are doing their things. Bless them. I love it because I get to live through you. What's that word? Vicariously through you right. coming right. from our community. You know, you guys are representing our community. Thank you. And Thank I you. just love just being a part. Because we started, guys, we started in high school together. Mm -hmm. We started in high school, and then me and Miss Andy actually started college together. Right, right. And we would travel, be in the same home. Uh, with the boys, it was just, it's, it's been a long journey. And we got our first state champion together. Right. So, yeah, oh, this yeah. is. It was great. It was it, great. Yeah, so. Just watching the boys as they grow and they continue right. to grow is just a blessing because we was a community. Yes. So, you know, we looked out for each other. We looked yeah. out for all our kids, you know, yeah. so it's, it's, I didn't do it. We all did it. Did. Yeah. So that's the best thing about it. We all did it. Yeah. And to continue on with the support, I still get the support. I still get that's the love. Good. He get the love. He never felt nothing but love. So, you know, yeah. like I said, it was our community that did it with us. So, yeah. you know, it's a great thing. It's, yeah. it's, it's a great thing. I'm blessed. I'm now, blessed. Now, you know what? The show today is about 
It's sibling rivalries. <laughs> and so, you know, when you have a couple of kids at the same right. time, around the same age. And so we just want to know from a mom's perspective, from your perspective, as how did you deal with it? How did you keep that balance between, uh, with, amongst your kids? I agree with both of them. <laughs> I agree right. with both of them. Right. If Vontae <laughs> said he was better than you, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if Junior support, you can't. Mm -hmm, yeah. Because right. right. there's a big difference. Vontae is like 6 to 1, 190. Junior's like 6 0, 248. You know right. what I'm saying? That's a big difference. Right. If he says he's good, okay. If you say you're good, I'm good with both of them. Because the more competitive they be with each other, the more competitive they be out in the world. Mm. Mm. So that's the best thing about it, competition. Me, myself, I play basketball. You know, I let the nation that's going in University of Dubuque, Iowa. Okay. So I taught them all their life. The whole thing I used to tell them all the time, who better than me? Mm. Why not me? You know what I'm saying? And the best thing, when Junior was starting out, you know, we was jealous of KD for a little while. Mm. KD was the man. He's still the man. He's still my man, though. I just talked to him last night, too. <laughs> yeah, on Instagram, yes, but I talked to him last night. Yeah. But uh, he was my man, and Junior used to say all the time, you know, KD got the heart. Mama, KD got yeah. the heart. So, baby, you got the heart, too. You got the heart, too. So once they got together, I want to tell you right now, your son is a great inspiration to my kids because he pushed them. He made them better. Wow. So, shout out to KD, Nixon, on God. Oh, wow. God plan. Remember, it was God plan. Oh, yeah. We did that all in junior and high school. Remember when he had yeah. the God's plan? Yeah. He was a great inspiration. They pushed each other, and we got much love for him. You know what I'm saying? Even Larry. We got love for him, too. You know, Larry, Vontae is Larry, little brother. So, every time Vontae is here, here come Larry. And I'm like, Larry, why you didn't come up last week? I've been here. <laughs> Like, I'm not important no more. But it's a great thing. It's yeah. a great thing. It's good that you said that. And because uh, I was telling Miss Karen, like, Chanel and the oldest, Larry, they got the same personality, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then you got Vontae mm -hmm. and Kadei. Mm -hmm. They got the same personality. They're more outgoing and they quiet, but don't, don't push them, <laughs> right? So, yeah. but... Uh, yeah, that's, that's heartfelt because my kids have paved the way wow. for a lot of people. Yeah, and on their level. And so uh, I appreciate that coming from you. Right. I really do. I'm telling you guys, we have, we, it's been a long journey with us. We, I'm telling you, we started high school. That's, and we really too much didn't see each other, but we knew each other. Yeah. Cause we was all like you said a community yeah. and then but when we got to college we in the same house mm -hmm. we colorado we in the same home and yeah. and so and just see chanel <laughs> yes cooking and to see your son make it yeah. oh my god to god be the glory god, you know thank you and so i appreciate represent that our community I, you know i'm a community person so he yeah. definitely represents <laughs> our community right. that's one thing i always say you know the news you know when you do something bad they'll reference a, 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 uh they'll reference the soto right. but when you're doing something good they want to put it on dallas but right junior represents the soto yes. and i love that i love all our kids that's what they do they're representing they're right. graduating college they're going and accomplishing their dreams right. and they represent our community so i really um Thank you. I love that. Thank I love you. That. So you just say, you know, with the rivalry, just agree with both of them. I agree with both of them. You're right. You're right. Whoever said they better. Whoever said they better. <laughs> and see, when my kids was growing up, I would say, you are the best football player in the world. Mm -hmm. And I will make them repeat that over. You know what's funny, over. though. I know. You know what's funny, though? Yeah. Me and Junior went to Hawaii in February, right? So we on the balcony talking, and he was like, Mama, you know what? You never even congratulate us after the game. You would just be like, okay, you didn't do this, or you didn't do that, or you should have caught this ball, or what were you thinking? Like, you know, I always, like, point out the stuff that I saw them do, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, Junior, I did that because, you know, I had to be the mom and dad. They dad died when they was eight and 10. Mm -hmm. So I had to be the mom and the dad. So I couldn't baby them. So I just criticized everything they done wrong. <laughs> That's what I did. So I ain't get no compliments. <laughs> I did not give compliments. I was like, uh-uh, you should have caught that ball. What were you thinking? Why didn't you run out of bounds? Why not nobody even close by you? Why didn't you block? <laughs> so she was playing the dad. Yeah. She was playing the dad. Because that's what most dads <laughs> would, do. would do. Look, it got so bad when I told me, don't even come pick me up after the game. <laughs> you just go home. 
Oh, that's so funny. She was playing the dad. Because dads that's don't play. They don't let up. Now, crazy. after you finish, then great job, son. Right. You know, but they don't, they, they're they not going to baby you. I do you know, come I, back. I do come back and say, that was a nice catch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you should have made a touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Mama ain't never says oh, yeah. so, it's fine. So, it's fine. So, what it is um, some things that you, um, being an NFL mom, what are some things that you can give back to parents to watch out for, to look out for? What kind of advice could you give? The best thing I can tell y'all is the idle mind is a devil playground. Mm. Just like you said about keeping them busy, I kept them busy summertime, wintertime, they played summer basketball, they played football in the summertime. Right. I kept them busy. Yeah. Uh -huh. And that kept them out of the streets. Yeah. Not that I think they was going to be in the street because mom to mom, they ain't going to let them anyway. Right. But to me, when you, when, and I'm not saying push the kids, and I'm not saying, like you said, football do pave a lot of way for education. Exactly. And now it's financial because now these kids can go straight from high school and earn a living. Yeah, yeah. So it has opened so many doors up, but it's not everything. Katie got his, his diploma. You know what I'm saying? He's going so, for his master's. And he's going for his master's. So it provides an opportunity not only for you to excel at what you want to do. Like you said, and when we all discuss this, only like, what, 5% of college kids make it to the NFL? Yeah. I didn't think my son was going to be in that 5%, but thank God he was. Yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, Absolutely. basically just keep them busy, yeah. stay on them, pay attention to them, yeah. follow them, be their number one fan. That's it, yeah. number one. Yeah. I, listen, you saw my games. I did it from little, little league until college. I would run down that field from the left all the way from here right. to there. Like, seriously, I, you know, you going to see me. Yeah. Oh, we know. <laughs> <laughs> You was running down the sideline in Colorado. Right. I'm like, I can't even get down there. Where should she get down there? <laughs> right. She had me running behind her. <laughs> she was gone. You yeah. feel me? I was like, I can't even get down. How she get down there so quick? When we came back to beat Nebraska. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was the best game ever. Game. So you said you played basketball? Mm-hmm. And so uh, I, think, I, I think I might have saw something about that Junior played basketball. He was going to play basketball, but he was going to have to cut his hair or something mm -hmm. like that. So that was his uh, freshman year when he, Junior first love is basketball. Okay. Really? His first love is basketball. He loved basketball. But Coach Dyer had the little quota, quota thing where they had to have a hair a certain way. Mm -hmm. So he wouldn't let Junior on the team unless he cut his dreads. And of course, y'all, everybody know Junior started drawing, growing him when his dad died. Yeah. So it was like a dedication to his dad. Yeah. So after that, like I told him, you got talent wherever. You take all that energy, take all that energy and put it to the football field. Put it to the football field and just make it work for you. Wow. He, for me, he, you know, I'm a, a woman and most men can see the it factor. But I could, it was just something about the way he <laughs> caught the ball. And I said, baby, you got the it factor. I didn't even know what it was, but, <laughs> you, you know, I just heard right. the men say it. But I was like, baby, you got the it factor. <laughs> and right. So it's a blessing. Yeah. So you guys, we thank you for thank coming you. on the thank show. You, you got to come back again, hang anytime, out with anytime. us. We appreciate right. you. Right. Um, We're so honored. I'm yes, so telling you. I'm honored we, to we, be around y'all. So you know, <laughs> even though y'all didn't tell me to join the group, you know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, like, I could have joined. <laughs> can we talk sports? You know what right. I'm saying? <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. We're going to have a, a whole little uh, group because I wanted to be able to pull from a group of women mm -hmm. right. anytime somebody's coming on the guest because I wanted the moms to be able to ask the questions because the moms know what they need from, from the kids' perspective. Right. So we're going to be creating this group and whoever mom that's available when their guest is coming, they will send out a list and then they will be able to say, I want to be, you know, to be the one to interview. Right. So when you're available, you can come yeah, on. Yeah, because you're traveling all yeah. the time. Every you time I look up on Facebook, right. you're gone. But Oh, glory to God. Hey, I can't wait to I miss them things. days when they had me running around all the time. I'd be so oh, bored yeah. sometimes. I'd be like, oh, man, I got to do something. Like, <laughs> G'd be like, come to Florida. I was like, for what? <laughs> it's like you want your own world, but you're like, man, I want to go over there. You know what I'm saying? Right. But right. it's great, though. But I do want to shout out to other parents that helped us throughout the way. Miss Stacy yeah. and them. Yeah. Shout out to Mr. Bird and Miss Stacy. Yeah. 
to all the people that was stood by our side and helped yes. us and did that struggle through college and high school with us. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Mrs. and Mrs. Rhymes. Mm -hmm. Truly a blessing. Right. Yes. Hey, man, let me tell you. I just want to take a minute to talk to y'all. Know it's getting ready to go back to school. Uh, a lot is happening. Uh, so much is going on with the COVID guidelines. Uh, the the TA just came out the other day saying that if a kid has a positive case, they don't even have to let you know as a parent. So I want you parents, you have to make sure that you're doing all that you can. When I was growing up, give them kids some car liver oil. Them kids can take a dose of that. Never had a cold during the winter months. Take that car liver oil and you could just go wherever you want to go, do whatever you want to do. Now you know you gotta wear your mask, you gotta put it on because a lot of the children aren't vaccinated. Parents, make sure you're trying to get vaccinated. Do what you need to do for you so you can keep your family safe. That's what we, I wanna make sure that at the end of the day that everybody is safe. So that's a little tidbit Big Mama has. Now I'm not, do not go out here saying that Big Mama said cod liver oil cures COVID-19. That is not what I said. But child, you better put your something, you better take a little dose of it. It probably could help you go a long way. Thank you for watching our show today. We just had a great guest, Miss Annie. And be sure to like and share this video and tell your friends about Can We Talk Sports. See you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs>